News of the Turkish seaborne invasion was broadcast over Turkish radio at 5 a.m. The announcer warned the Turkish community in Cyprus to evacuate their homes and find shelter underground. People rushed from their homes for bunkers near the Turkish hospital in the Turkish quarter. We were driving out on the main Nicosia to Karenia road when we first sighted the aircraft, flying low over the Karenia mountains to the north. The Turkish airborne invasion had begun. It's now about three minutes past six, four minutes past six, and the first of the Turkish troops have landed in Cyprus. About five of these aircraft passed over in the last five minutes. They were guided in by jet fighters, and the very first paratroopers are now hitting Cyprus soil. Over there, Alan. The aircraft came in waves at five minute intervals with 60 paratroopers for each aircraft. Their dropping zone was less than two miles from the capital of Nicosia. We waited for the Greek controlled National Guard to begin firing on them with artillery, but nothing happened. They, like us perhaps, could just not believe it was happening. My name is Nicholson. How do you do? People in the Turkish Cypriot villages by the road, the people the paratroopers had come to protect, cheered them down. These first invaders had all landed close together, about 600 men, and within minutes they were on their way, close to the town of Gonyeli. We thought they would make straight for Nicosia, at least as far as the Turkish quarter on the outskirts. But no, they fanned out towards the west, the direction of the airfield. They were carrying light weapons. They had no small artillery, which, as we discovered later, they were to need when the Greeks began shelling them. They were led by a sergeant, a standard bearer in true invading style. The bright red colour of the Turkish flag on an open plain like this, clearly visible to the Greek artillery gunners on the other side of the road. Small boys from the villages carried parts of the heavy machine guns for the troops, who also had with them mortars and anti-tank guns. They've been here an hour now since they landed from the DC-3s. Now about 500 of them in this position. They are moving towards the main road, the Karenia Nicosia Road. And now one and a half miles from Nicosia over there. Within an hour of the parachute landing, the first of the Turkish jet fighters began circling overhead. Later, they were to dive bomb Greek Cypriot positions close to Nicosia, positions that had field and ACAC guns. The Greeks could see early the dropping zone, but now they could not see where the troops had moved to and began firing shells and mortars wildly into the plain. The explosion set the corn stubble on fire and smoke began to block out the entire area. The fires also detonated the many ammunition cases dropped by parachute. It must mean that Turks now have a great deal less ammunition than they need. A field hospital by the side of the trench we were hiding in also came under sporadic fire. Troop casualties during the landing were not high, but with the shelling, they began to mount. Then shortly before three in the afternoon, we heard the noise of helicopters. And again, coming in low over the mountains from the north, from Turkey, we saw them. It must be one of the biggest helicopter assaults in recent history. We tried counting them, but at 50 the sky was too confused with helicopters. American built Hueys landing and taking off.
troops took cover away from the road and moved east. The Greeks began shelling, but the Turks were well hidden by now before the artillery could get decent sights on them. As of six o'clock Saturday night, we have witnessed over a thousand Turkish troops land on the plains around Gonyeli, less than two miles from Nicosia. Troops who are now in vitally strategic positions surrounding Nicosia on the east and on the west. <laughs> 